Kabayan Portalis. And I'm Shea Aguinaldo from AgriPortal Philippines. And we are your host for today's medical webinar. This webinar is brought to you by agriportal.ph and Kabayan Portalis in cooperation with the International Association of Lions Club District 301-83, King's King Family Association, Ucor Love Foundation INC, Federation of Electrical and Electronic Suppliers and Manufacturers of the Philippines INC, and Thrive Agronomics Corporation, Soil.ph, and Seedling.ph. Yes, Che. You know, when a family member is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or other dementia, the effect on your entire family can be overwhelming. I can relate to this, Che. I can still remember the pain and it's like a needle pricking at my heart for he doesn't recognize me. Yes, my own father. My own father doesn't remember my name. He was gone, but the sadness in me is still here. So I can tell you that the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and dementia can trigger a range of emotions, including anger, fear, frustrations, and sadness. There are many decisions to make about treatment, living arrangements, finances, and end-of-life care. As a result, family conflicts are common. That is why it is important to have knowledge on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia. Aren't we fortunate that we have this topic for today's webinar? Yes, we are. Today's web, um, medical webinar or is themed on dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. That is truly, um, I agree also that caring for a loved one with dementia possesses many challenges for families and also for their caregivers. And we are fortunate enough because this webinar um, will give us a practical knowledge in understanding dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's behavior, and will provide some tips and strategies for dealing with the troubling um, behavior problem communi and communication difficulties often encounter uh, when caring for a person with dementia, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. So before we start uh, the program, uh, we would uh, like uh, to just give a few reminders. We would also like to encourage everyone to participate in the open forum portion for questions for our uh, esteemed speaker. You will, uh, you will uh, may also chat your questions to the, to the Zoom chat box. Thank you. All right, so without further ado, I would like to um, introduce um, our Bishop Paul Hernandez for our invocation. Bishop Paul Hernandez um, obtained his bachelor's degree of pastoral knowledge in PBS College of Bible. He is a senior pastor of um, evangelical um, Hold on. Uh, Evangelical Free Church and the National Director for Free Mission Philippines INC since 2000. Bishop Paul is a teacher, trainer, and motivational speaker in leadership and management. He was one of the Kabayan Party List representative alongside with Congressman Ron Salo during the 17th Congress. Currently, Bishop Paul um, is the third nominee of Kabayan Party List in the upcoming 2022 election. We call on Bishop Paul Hernandez to lead us for the opening prayer. Thank you so much. Let us all uh, feel the presence of God and let us close our eyes as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for bringing each one of us Thank you for the wonderful discussion on the topic, practical knowledge on dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease. Thank you, Lord, for our uh, blessed and wonderful webinar speaker, Dr. Tan Sochon. I pray, Heavenly Father, 
that as he shares his knowledge, many of us will learn, many of us will understand some of the things that we don't understand about this topic. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless each of the listener. I pray, Lord, that you bless each of the people represented in this webinar, that it will help us understand more about this topic. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, for the things that you've done, and for the things that you are yet to do. We thank you. Thank you for Congressman Ron Salo and our beloved uh, moderators and our keynote speaker. We honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bishop Paul Hernandez, for the invocation. May we request everyone to place their right palm to their left chest as we sing the Philippine National Anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang Congressman Ron P. Salo. Congressman Ron P. Salo is the representative of Cabayan Cardinals in the 17th and 18th Congress. He finished his bachelor's degree in psychology at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, when, where he graduated as cum laude. He obtained his law degree at UP Diliman as a working student. He obtained his master's in international law at the University College London, London, UK, as the British Chevroning Scholar, where he graduated with merit. He obtained his executive doctorate in educational leadership at the Graduate School of Public and Development Management in the Development Academy of the Philippines. Representative Ron Salo briefly taught at the UP College of Law and De La Salle College of Law. He was also a former member of the board of RTU and ERES. At present, he sits as the regent of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, as he is the president and the board member of the Chevroning Alumni Foundation of the Philippines INC. Congressman Salo is the brain behind C2C and KISS webinar. He is also a preacher. He is married to Dr. Jewel Gay Salo, a father of three to, to, to three children, Glory, Elijah, and Jacob. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a virtual round of applause to Congressman Ron P. Salo. Thank you very much, Ms. Che. Thank you very much also to Ms. Che, one of our moderators as well. Mother Danielle King, Pastor David Uy, Dr. Cho Chong Tan, participants, listeners, viewers, a blessed afternoon to everyone. I am deeply honored and privileged to welcome you in this webinar series on health organized by AgriPortal in partnership with Kabayan Party List. A webinar on various health and medical issues are relevant now more than ever as we face a global pandemic. We should be able to know how to take care of our own health for indeed, our health lies in our own hands. The first topic in the series is about the practical knowledge of dementia, dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's diseases. These are diseases which affect the brain and are most common in people who are older than 50 years old, though there are some cases where symptoms begin earlier. 
People affected with these diseases develop profound memory loss as the symptoms get worse over time. Therefore, our affected loved ones may begin to forget us and the life they have lived even as they approach their golden years. It is certainly tra tragic to have someone we love forget us right before our very eyes. Surely, we do not want to see ourselves or our older relatives suffer from these diseases. We want them to live longer functional lives so we will be able to spend more quality time with them. In this webinar, care of ourselves for already suffering with dementia, Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's diseases, this webinar will certainly educate us on how to effectively manage, cope with, and live with people having these diseases. I load AgriPortal PH, of which I am proudly part of, for the group's initiative in conducting a webinar series on health. This will certainly help a lot of our fellow Filipinos, and certainly, as always, Kabayan Party List is one with you all in the promotion of the health of our people. Thus, I greatly encourage all of us to listen carefully, ask questions, and after the webinar, we hope that we'll be able to apply all that we have learned. Maraming salamat po sa bawat po sa atin at isang mapagpalang linggo po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Congressman Salo, for your inspiring welcome address. Before we introduce our esteemed speaker for this afternoon, we would like first to show you some promotional videos of AgriPortal and Kabayan. This country has faced so many problems since the start of 2020. So why AgriPortal? 1. To solve our food problem. Our government's poor management of farm produce have resulted in either oversupply that leads to wastage, or undersupply that leads to skyrocket farm prices. With special thanks to these greedy middlemen, we have a problem. Our solution? We will bring the market to the farm, through project harvests. We will connect the buyers, processors, and end users to farmers' communities. To solve our present food problem. 2 to transform the mindsets of our farmers and less fortunate Filipinos. Presently, we live with a wrong mindset. This is the main reason why farmers continue to live below poverty line. They do not know their basic ABC, attitude, behavior, and character. Our solution, our stewardship quotient program is designed to transform our stakeholders and farm communities. Morally, behaviorally, financially. Three, to motivate the youth and women to get involved. Presently, our youth and women are neglected, while our farmers are getting old. Our solution, let us empower our youth and women to get involved in agriculture, environment, ecotourism, and agribusiness. Women in agriculture surpasses the men. Let us equip our youth, for they are the hope of our future. 4. To form faith-based communities to become agri-enterprises. Because of agrarian reforms, farmers are fragmented and vulnerable to abuses of the rich merchants. Our solution, we shall incubate faith-based farmer communities and faith-based investor communities, then design pilot projects for them, to become independent agri-enterprises of various sizes and capacities, supported by featured services of AgriPortal, for them to thrive and grow, that one day soon, they will achieve their dreams and aspirations. 5. To resurrect agriculture and make money. Our solution, as we solve the food problem, educate and change the mindset of Filipinos, empower the women and the youth, and forming faith-based communities to become agri-enterprises all over the provinces. This would guarantee not only a resurrection, but a genuine transformation of our hearts of the nation. As we look forward seeing our vision fulfilled and completing our mission, reaping the benefits of transformed hearts of the nation, as our stakeholders become true stewards of God's resources, prosperous families bound by love, productive and inclusive communities, a blessed and fruitful nation, blessing to all nations. Let's work together to make this noble advocacy a reality. For our children and for future generations. AgriPortal, transformation in the hearts of the nation. Thank you for watching.
All right. Thanks, AgriPortal and Kabayan Partilis for that informational video. Please visit their websites too. Now, the best person to introduce our speaker for today is none other than Brother Dan Ching, a close personal friend of our speaker. Brother Daniel Lim Kalau Ching is currently a member of the Board of Trustees and Treasurer of AgriPortal Philippines. He is the District Governor of the International Association of Lions Club District 301-A3. He is the Chairman of Bucor Love Foundation Incorporated, President of Kim Shu Ching Family Association, President of Federation of Electrical and Electronic Suppliers and Manufacturers of the Philippines. He is also the Director of Tribe Agronomics Corporation, and lastly, President and General Manager of Arizona Integrated Technologies Incorporated. May I call on Brother Dan, and please do the honor to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much, Sister She, for uh, introducing me. Baka akala ng mga kasama natin, eh, ako ang speaker, but actually I'm not. So, uh, uh, to the indulgence of everyone, we are so blessed and so happy that we are in our midst. With our midst is uh, a very known neurologist and psychiatrist. Uh, she, he is an, an associate professor, Institute of Medicine, FEU Dr. Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation, Manila, the head section of psychiatry, Department of Medicine, FEU, Dr. Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation. He is also the head section of psychiatry at the Metropolitan Medical Center. He is the president of Philippine Academy of Acupuncture, a person who has a wide experience in handling, managing, and even, even giving suggestions to his uh, friends and patients on how to manage uh, problems related to the topics that we are going to discuss today. He is a very well-known neurologist and psychiatrist. And without much further ado, let us give uh, a warm applause and welcome to our speaker, Dr. Cho Chong Tang. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Thank Brother you. Now the screen is yours, Dr. Tan. Thank you, Danny, for your very kind, uh, very kind introduction. Uh, I'll, now, I'll now start to, to screen share. Okay. I'm happy to be... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Tan, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm happy to be here again with, uh, with everybody. And uh, our purpose of the talk today would be for public education and there are many people with relatives friends with this kind of problems with dementia and we hope by uh, after this lecture we'll be able to give them some education as to what to do how to deal with their relatives and loved ones okay so but, uh, all right. clear. okay so so we are we, we talk about dementia we are going to see the, talk about dementia and Parkinson's disease. <laughs> and uh, the purpose of our talk will be for public education so that uh, some relatives, friends with these problems uh, will be able to have some, uh, some kind of a better understanding of the problem. Now, what is dementia? Dementia is a medical and also a neurological problem with gradual and progressive impairment or difficulty of, of remembering, okay? And uh, when we say remembering, that means we are referring to the memory, the thinking or comprehension, and also with the decision-making, okay? So with, with problems of all of this, uh, daily life uh, would be affected. So the loss of memory, language, okay? so they may, uh, they may problem with uh, looking for the right choice of words, okay? Problem with, uh, with uh, with the expression in problem solving we always say executive problems okay? like uh, when you say problem solving like uh, let's say if there's a plan to go out okay so the plan to go out where to go how to arrange for the uh, for the transportation the, the activities etc all of this would be affected by <coughs> by dementia 
So dementia is a broad term because in their <coughs> main so <coughs> there are many different types of uh, dementia okay of course uh, we always uh, hear the word uh, alzheimer's hmm? actually alzheimer's is one type of dementia of course we have the vascular dementia which is due to due to stroke or problem with the with the blood vessels. Okay. Now the, the word Alzheimer's is actually Alzheimer's is actually the name of a German doctor by the name of Dr. Alois Alzheimer's. The reason that this is uh, is named after him is because of his great contribution in the study and understanding of dementia. As you can see, the picture on the left is the picture of Dr. Alzheimer, and uh, the picture on the right is the is the patient uh, whom he who took whom he took care of from the time patient presented with the problem until the death of the patient until mm. he even opened up the brain and he discovered that the brain of the patient uh, was different from the brain of the people with uh, without dementia. So the, the left is a picture of Dr. Alzheimer, okay? and also in his laboratory with his uh, colleagues. So this is Alzheimer. Okay? Now, there are many great figures uh, in history with uh, Alzheimer, with dementia, like Dr. Charles uh, Kao. He was the father of broadband. Okay? When, he, uh, when he went up the stage to claim the, the award okay, of, the, of the Nobel Prize, uh, he didn't know anything. He didn't know the significance of that the ceremony. So this is the tragedy of Al dementia. Even the American president, uh, Ronald Reagan, was also uh, a, a victim of, of dementia. And there's also in the, the media, American media, a concern about the, about the, uh, the mentality of uh, the president by then. So you saw, uh, dementia is the the disease of the old age. Hmm? As you see, people at the age of uh, around 65, okay, then there's a 5% chance of developing dementia. And at uh, 70 and 80, hmm, as one grows older, the chances of de developing dementia will be higher. Hmm? So this is a slide of, uh, of, the, of the nerve cells of a normal person and also a nerve cells of uh, patients with dementia. If you look at the, the 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 green bar, the green bar at the at the right upper, you can see that um, at the age of 30, around age of 30, the brain cells of an individual will start to decrease in number. However, in normal people, until the age of 80, the number of uh, the volume of nerve cells will still radiate, remain up to around 80 or 90 percent. So that is for the normal people. But if you look at the left, uh, the left at uh, the, the, the black line, okay, and that is the line referring to the patients with dementia. So starting at the age of 30, up to, up to the age of 30, 80, the, 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 the nerve cell volume is, uh, is uh, deteriorated, is uh, down to around 10% or 5%. So you can see the difference with the, the volume of the nerve cells between normal people and also in patients with dementia. Okay. So these are, what are the signs and symptoms of dementia? One is a uh, memory loss, memory loss. Of course, uh, um, uh, people as young as uh, even in elementary students, they also complain of memory loss. However, in patients with, uh, with dementia, the memory loss would be more prominent. Usually the memory loss of the patients with dementia is uh, so-called uh, <clears throat> the short-term memory, okay? The short-term memory or immediate memory. And uh, we always hear complaints of the family members that the patients keep on asking the same question, okay? So let us say, if we will say, tell them that tomorrow we are going to somewhere else. Okay? So after telling him, maybe after a few minutes, the patient will ask again. Okay? So then, so what as a result of this, we always say, oh, he becomes very maculate. Hmm? I just told him earlier, a few minutes ago, 
then he will ask me again. So I think, uh, so this is the, uh, this is the so-called immediate memory. That means to say, you just tell him something a while ago, a few seconds or a few minutes ago, they forget it. So this is the so-called uh, immediate memory. However, these patients, the family will also notice something, but the events dated back 20, 30, or 50 years ago, they can, they can still remember. Okay? So this is the pattern of patients with them, the pattern of memory loss of patients with dementia. They always forget the recent or the immediate one. However, the events dated back 20, 30 years ago, the, they, they do still remember. The explanation is that uh, those information dated back many, many years ago, they were registered in the brain when the brain was still in good uh, functional state. However, at present, uh, the memory system, the machinery of the memory is already not functioning well. That's why whatever we tell them a few minutes ago, they will forget. So with this uh, understanding, we should uh, try to give understanding and uh, to these patients, try to don't get irritated, although at times it can be, it can be very irritable for us. <coughs> but uh, try, to, try to understand them. The reason they keep on asking is that they, is, is, yeah, they, they don't do it intentionally. It's really that they totally forget. And since they forget, that means they, they don't know, and, but it's not but natural. For them to ask. So that is the characteristic of the memory loss of patients with uh, dementia. And, of, and also, they may have difficulty in doing familiar routine activities. Okay? And language will be a problem, like uh, the choice of vocabulary. Okay? So let us say, let's say if you, if there's something like a comb, they may not be able to say come. They may say, oh, they may say, I need something like something to, to fix my hair. Okay. And so instead of using a saying the word come, okay, okay, on the key, they, instead of saying the word key, they may say, I need something to, to open the door. Hmm? So they cannot, they, hmm? they could hardly argue for the vocabulary hmm? key, okay? the word which is key. Okay. So, and they may be disoriented to space. Okay, like at a time that even within the house, they may not be able to locate where's the toilet, where's the kitchen. So these are, and uh, judgment will be affected. They may have wrong judgment. A decision making will also be a problem. Okay? Like, uh, like a, I have a patient, he, he put his shoes inside the refrigerator. Okay, so uh, of course, I, it may cause some misunderstanding. Family members will may accuse him to be doing those things intentionally. So these are some of the problems that we should give uh, uh, understanding for this patient with, with, uh, <clears throat> with, dem with dementia. Dr. Tan, you lost your uh, okay. uh Yes, go. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay na po. Okay na, Dr. Tan. Bumalik na po. Do you see it now? Do you see it now? Yes, uh, we can see it now. Please. Uh, do you see it now? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay. See it now, Paul. Okay. So they when the behavior will be affected, they may become irritable. They may become impulsive. Okay. Become impulsive. And uh, they can even become paranoid. And this is uh, also related to the, uh, to the loss of memory or poor memory. Like uh, they may misplace their money and not find the money. And then blame some family members of stealing, hmm? stealing the money, stealing the cell phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Hmm. And uh, as I said earlier, getting lost. Okay, they may not be able to recognize. Hmm? Uh, uh, so the patients, they have to be very careful, uh, especially with our door. Don't let them go out by themselves. Hmm? They may go out. They can go straight, turn hmm? straight. But the moment they turn right or left. They may not recognize the the place because of the visual spatial uh, visual and spatial uh, disorientation. They may not be able to recognize the way back to home. Back home, I have one patient uh, who who went to far place. He even took a right, a jeep, 
very far place and uh, went to a wrong place. Okay? And the worst thing is that he went to the house of a stranger and even claimed that the house is, he owns the house. Okay? So this becomes a, uh, a medical legal problem. Okay? First, uh, intrusion of a private property, that's already a, a problem. And then the worst is that he even claimed that uh, he owns the house. So, and there will be behavioral problem, mood disorder, okay? inappropriate behavior, aggressive behavior, sleeping problems. Also. So these are the summary of the patients, huh? memory problem, language disorientation, personality changes. So these are, there are several stages, stages. If you look at the stage one to four, okay? So in stage one, the patient may still appear to be, stage one patient is normal, okay? And in the first two, three stages, they may appear to be seemingly normal. However, when they reach the stage four, the family members will start to notice that, that uh, the forgetfulness is becoming more and more prominent. And they are no longer the, uh, the normal kind of, uh, of memory loss. And in stage five, their personal, their personal hygiene, their person care for their personal, uh, for personal uh, matters will be affected. Okay? They may not be able to function very well. When as they become more severe, they may not be able to take care of the personal hygiene, even their, their nutrition, their personal care, self-care, all of this will be adversely affected. So we can also classify it into three stages. The early stage, okay? The early stage, we have a mild, uh, sim mild memory problem, okay? Some seemingly uh, normal or uh, very, very trivial difficulties. Trivial difficulties. Hmm? So the, the, in early stage, they may appear to be normal. However, it is very important to be, for the family members to be aware of this, okay? to be aware of the memory problem, some of the behavioral changes, like uh, they may lose their interest in daily life, okay? in daily routines. Hmm? Like I have one patient before he used to take care of the routines and also he, he took care of the medication of the wife and also of the children. When he started to have dementia, he totally stopped doing those things. Okay? And this is an important stage because uh, number one, the family should, should start to do something. Patient may have problem with the signing check. Okay? There could be some issues of properties, properties also in business. So their decision making will be affected. So the family should start to, to, to consider some, uh, some legal, some legality, some like the licensing of the the family properties, okay, the business. So this is the, the best time for them to do necessary actions. Because when they progress to the middle middle stage, it will be more difficult, okay? be more difficult. Like I have a patient, uh, his, signature, his signature became different from his normal signature. Okay? And uh, I was asked by the family members to issue a certificate testifying that he's a case of dementia. Otherwise, the the bank will not honor his signature, which is totally different from his usual signature. And so in the middle phase, of course, they need more, more personal supervision by the family members, by the caregiver, because the memory, the judgment, and other, and other behavioral problems, they may become hostile. Like uh, they may, uh, like, uh, I, I, some of my patients, they become hyper, they become, they lose the inhibition, they become hypersexual in their behavior. And the late stage of the severe stage, okay, the memory, judgment, thinking, comprehension, all of them will be totally uh, uh, deteriorated. Okay? So they have to be under the care of caregiver, their nutrition, their personal hygiene, their safety, like fall, all of this. So in the in the late stage, okay, 
they may not be able to take care of themselves. Fall accidents, all of this should be well taken care of. And at this stage, you can see that uh, the nutrition, they, can, they have to be under, huh? they should, in NGT, okay, natural gas gym has to be inserted for proper nutrition of the patient. And in many cases, they lie down on bed, okay, as a result of chronic lying down, bed sore, pneumonia, and fall, fracture, and eventually coma. So this would, this would be the, the, the scenario in the terminal stage of dementia. As you see from, if you see from, if you look at this slide from left to right, okay, in the right, okay, from stage one for the first year, okay, with, uh, with relatively good uh, cognitive function, good memory and language, and uh, uh, in the year two and three, there's a gradual deterioration until year, uh, year eight or nine, when they are totally dependent. The care, nursing care, personal hygiene, nutrition, all of them are, uh, have to be taken care of by family members. And this is a picture of the brain, okay? Our brain, okay? To the left, that's a normal brain, okay? If you look at the, the to the middle and to the, uh, to the right, okay? You can see to the right, uh, the space between the brain tissue become wider okay? because of the loss of brain tissue. Okay. So again, this is a, a this, this shows to us that different parts of the brain are being damaged by, by, by the dementia process. Now, of course, there's a difference between normal, normal memory problem. Okay? In normal memory, normal forgetfulness, we tend to forget, but there's, we can always recall. Hmm? We can recall and usually the so-called uh, normal forgetfulness is secondary to, to poor concentration. Like the middle of us are so busy to the point that we, we become forgetful. Not that there's a problem with the memory, but because of, uh, of uh, so the brain is bombarded with so many information. And whereas in, whereas in dementia, when one forgets, uh, it will be very difficult or impossible for them to recall. So that is the one big, big difference between normal forgetfulness and the forgetfulness or amnesia of patients with uh, dementia. Okay? So for us in normal people, we may forget something, we may misplace something, but uh, we can we can recall them. Okay. However, in patients with dementia, they may not total, they will totally not be able to recall okay, where they put the things. And also for the, there are, yeah, I think it's important for us to know, maybe dated back 20, 30 years ago, it may not be very important to know about the diagnosis because at that time, uh, knowing and not knowing will be the same because number one, there was no treatment at all. But nowadays uh, we know how to prevent and there are medications for it. So it's important for us to identify, to know this, because uh, there are treatment, there are measures to prevent, and there are drugs for us to use, for, the, for us to, to slow down the process of deterioration of dementia. And uh, for patients with dementia, what is important is, uh, we can do a lot of things, as we said earlier, we can prevent, okay? So, uh, for patients, with the, especially in the early phase of dementia, we have to encourage them to, to have more mental activities and also physical activities. Mental activities, because uh, you know, dementia is a problem with the brain, with the thinking mm -hmm. and comprehension. So by encouraging them to have mental activities like games, like games, then we can we are stimulating the brain, stimulating the brain. And music therapy is one, okay? You can see that, uh, you can see this is like of music and brain. <coughs> so music and brain, as you can see music, 
by listening to music and swimming. <laughs> you can see that many parts of the brain are being affected, huh? <laughs> like the corpus callosum, the motor cortex, the auditory, the, uh, the hippocampus, memory center, the visual center. You can see that um, the music in <laughs> music is a kind of mental exercise. So with music and also the kind of mental exercise, many parts of the brain would be stimulated and the functions would be preserved. So music is a very important part of the of a therapy for patients with dementia. And one thing I like to mention is about the role of acupuncture. Acupuncture is a traditional Chinese medical practice. Okay? Nowadays, uh, more and more, more and more evidences are accumulating to show to us that acupuncture helps. Okay? Especially in early phase of uh, patients with dementia, they have depression. So acupuncture can help them with their depression. And also for the behavioral problem, they may become irritable, they may probably be sleeping. So acupuncture is, uh, can play an important role in the treatment of uh, dementia. And you can see that uh, these are the different acupuncture points that can help in the treatment of dementia. And as you said earlier, uh, mental exercise is one. And physical exercise is also very important. So in mental exercise, since uh, an Alzheimer's, it's a problem with the mental function. So we, we stimulate the brain so that the, the remaining cells in the brain will be preserved. Like uh, in mental exercise, like uh, let's say in bodybuilding, we, we, try to, we try to develop our body by weight lifting. Okay? So we develop our muscles. In mental exercise, we sing, we read, we play, okay? So we are preserving the, the, the nerve cells. <laughs> now, physical exercise is very important. Physical exercise can help us with, uh, can also, can also uh, is very intimately related to mental function. Okay? Well, uh, let, let's, I'll go to this. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, we'll go to that later. But this is a picture, these four pictures are pictures of the patients with dementia during the young age. If you look at the left upper, you can see the, the, the old lady looking at the, the mirror, it's, the, it's a picture of her young time, her picture during young age. Okay? The right upper, the old lady, okay? she, she was a nurse during her young age, okay? her beautiful face, the young age, okay, and the right lower, the gentleman <clears throat> with his wife, okay, and the picture in the the picture uh, is uh, during his young age, okay, and the left lower, the the lady, the old lady with her picture of young age during her young age. Now, what are some of the risk factors? So. We, it's important for us to know the risk factors because by knowing these risk factors, we can prevent. We can prevent. Like uh, a, less, a study showed that the people who are less educated have higher risk of uh, developing dementia. And because of this, uh, a, a person may, be, may not be able to receive a high education, but if you can encourage them to have more mental activities, like reading, watching TV, okay, engaging in more physical, more mental activities that can also serve as a deterrence against a dementia. Okay? Well, diabetes is, uh, will contribute to a risk for dementia. So people, the, the, uh, the control of diabetes is very important. Hearing loss, of course, hearing loss, people who are <clears throat> yeah, hearing loss, they may, uh, hearing loss, poor hearing may discourage people from activities. Okay? So they may not like to social to socialize with other people because of poor hearing. Studies show that uh, hearing loss is associated with higher higher incidence of dementia. It's 
smoking, okay? less physical activities, okay? air pollution, excessive, drink, excessive drinking of alcohol, smoking, okay? social isolation, okay? depression, all of this uh, will constitute uh, risks, factors of developing dementia. And of course, um, a head injury, okay? especially the boxer, okay? the boxers, injuries, um, basketball player, those people engaging in, in exercise that will be, uh, that will, uh, that the high risk for, um, for injuries like football, soccer, all of this. Um, okay? And uh, all infection of the brain um, or air pollution in the environment, diabetes, obesity, all of these are risk factors for developing dementia. Okay? And the diabetes, high blood pressure, yeah. hypertension. Uh, hypertension, because uh, in hypertension, there will be hypertension can be predisposed to so called hardening of the arteries or atherosclerosis. And as a result of this, there will be less blood supply to the brain. So, less blood supply, less nutrition less oxygen, and then predisposition to dementia. Okay? Likewise, the heart disease will also be, uh, be predisposed by, by this hypertension diabetes. Well, so hearing loss, a study showed that hearing loss is associated with, uh, with the higher incidence of dementia. Or alcohol, alcoholism. Chronic intake of alcohol is bad for the mental function and for our memory. Ah, yeah. yeah, one thing I like to emphasize is uh, physical exercise. In physical exercise, the exercise like biking, running, walking, okay, shadow boxing, tai chi, all of these exercise, even though they are physical exercise, but this physical exercise will which stimulate the brain to, to secrete something which we call brain-derived neurotrophic function. So exercise will stimulate more brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the brain. And this brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or in short, we call it BDNF. This BDNF is protective to the brain cells, and it will enhance and preserve our memory. So, so not only do we need mental exercise, we also need physical exercise in order to stimulate more BDNF and to, and, and to preserve and also enhance our brain function, our comprehension, and also our memory. So remember, physical exercise is very important. So Tai Chi, okay? So Tai Chi, it will decrease the level of the stress hormone in the brain. It can also help us with our digestive system. The nutrition, the heart rate, the blood pressure, all of this will be normalized by this Tai Chi exercise. And one thing I like to mention is vitamin D. Vitamin D. Nowadays, uh, there are studies showing that vitamin D is very important in the prevention of dementia. So vitamin D, uh, in fact, uh, we can also check the vitamin D level of the blood. So if the vitamin D level is uh, low, then this will uh, show to us the importance of taking vitamin D. However, if you don't take the vitamin D level, it's uh, helpful for us to take vitamin D. Okay, so, so if you are being presented with a patient, uh, with a relative, loved one, uh, with uh, dementia, what should we do? Of course, uh, what I we mentioned earlier, like the history is, is very important by being aware of the signs and symptoms that we presented earlier, that those information about the signs and symptoms would be a very important uh, clue for us to suspect that a patient is suffering from dementia. And then we have to do maybe Further examination by doing neuroimaging like CT scan or MRI. Why do we have to do this? It's important for us to do this because uh, we may be able to identify some medical or neurological problems that can be that can be treated 
like some patients, they have something like we call subdural hematoma. Patients with the chronic bleeding of the brain or underneath the, the outer layer of the brain. Okay? And this bleeding will lead to increase in uh, pressure of the brain and patients may have poor memory. So if we, if we find this in the brain, then this is a very simple problem. The patient can undergo a simple surgery of the brain to drain the, to drain the, the blood, okay? the blood. And then the patient will be, there's a good chance of patient to have 100% recovery. In some patients, we can even treat them medically without, uh, without doing surgery. The only thing is that it may take some time, but if, however, there, however, there's a good chance of recovery. So it can be treated medically. However, if the blood is so too much, then we may need surgery. Okay? So neuroimaging can help us identify some some remediable or correctable conditions. So, then, uh, so uh, one thing like I like to know is some sunlight. Okay? Sunlight is important, okay? and this is the number one. In the early phase of dementia, many patients they have depression. So, exposing to sunlight every day <clears throat> will help us. Uh, will help prevent that dementia. And also, this is also related to what I mentioned earlier, vitamin D. Exposure to sunlight will enhance the vitamin D level of our body. And of course, we can also supplement with vitamin D to be good. So, it does. so sunlight exposure will give us more heat energy to the body. It can also help us with our mood. With the mood, help us with our sleep and also about memory. So this is a kind of natural therapy in sunlight. Okay. Of course, uh, something related uh, like sugar, control of blood sugar is also important. Okay. Control of the diabetes. Diabetes, cholesterol level, eat more green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. So these are things that can help us in the prevention of illness. And uh, something related to this is a Mediterranean diet. And the study showed that Mediterranean diet, if you see this diet, it's more of green leafy, green of green leafy vegetable, less of meat. Okay? So you can see that eating green leafy vegetable will be very good in prevention of dementia. So Mediterranean diet, green leafy vegetable, would be very good. Okay? Now I like to mention about red wine. Okay? Red wine. Okay? Red wine is good. It's a good antioxidant. Maybe a, a, a small shot of red wine every day will be good as an antioxidant. It can also be good in our memory for the brain. Okay? It lowers the risk of a stroke, okay? heart attack. Also good for the brain. Coffee, hmm? studies show the coffee is also good for the, for the memory. However, for some patients, they are so sensitive to coffee, they may develop uh, a palpitation, they may not be able to sleep uh, uh, at night. So for those people who don't have those uh, uh, bad effects of, of, uh, of uh, COVID, like a palpitation or nervousness or insomnia, then they have the, they can, they can take out they can take uh, coffee. Okay? Coffee will be good for the memory okay? and also will be good for our mood. Okay. But this is related. No? Now, one thing I like to mention now is uh, <clears throat> is uh, is uh, a gut. Huh? I like to mention is uh, probiotic. Now, actually, when we take probiotic, actually, probiotic actually, probiotics are actually bacteria. They are healthy bacteria. So if we take in probiotic, we are trying to, to, to create good, good, good bacteria flora in the, uh, in the intestine. And with the good bacteria in the intestine, we can preserve the integrity of the intestine and prevent the bad toxin. 
and prevent the the the, the, the unhealthy food from being absorbed into our body. So now we are seeing more and more evidence that uh, bacteria that uh, probiotics would be very good, not only for our general health but also in our in the prevention of uh, of dementia and also for our mood and emotion. So probiotics. <coughs> Sorry, I'm happy. And you see, this is a slide showing to us the importance of probiotics in our physical as well as mental health and also for our memory. Well, another is omega-3. Omega-3, this is a health food. Omega-3 is good for our memory. It's good it will lower cholesterol level. It's good for heart. It's also good for the brain. And also for our mood. Our mood. Studies show that uh, Omega-3 will be good in prevention of uh, depression. And as we know, depression will also predispose a person to dementia. So taking omega-3 can help not only the heart, but also our emotion and also our memory. So these are the things, okay? But exercise, diet, mental exercise, physical exercise. These are the measures that we can do to prevent dementia. And meditation, meditation and qigong of the Chinese exercise. That is out there. As you can see, spirituality is also an important part of, of our life, not only for dementia, but for normal people like us, we need spirituality. Okay, sleep, proper sleep, it's also good. It's important to be able to have enough, enough rest. Well, this is also a slide showing that uh, the BDNF and other healthy uh, neurotransmitters of the brain uh, will be stimulated by physical exercise. It can also help in neurogenesis. There are studies showing that uh, <clears throat> there are studies showing that people with uh, with prolonged exercise, people with uh, for the chronic uh, exercise, with chronic uh, meditation, <clears throat> with this thing, <clears throat> with this exercise, mental and physical exercise, the nerve cells will be, the, the volume of nerve cells will be more than those non exercises So you can see that the earth, <clears throat> uh, the earth many, many years ago, we always say that the, the brain cells will not grow. But now, this we are seeing more evidence that uh, physical exercise and proper nutrition can preserve the brain cells and can even enhance or increase the number of our uh, nerve cells. <clears throat> okay, huh? physical exercise and the brain function. So, in other words, uh, so in patients with uh, dementia, we should. Uh, we should show them tender loving care, okay? We should, uh, 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 they, have, uh, they have been with us for, a, for in their lifetime, so we should show them care, love, and uh, proper care for them. Okay? <clears throat> and you can see that group activities, spiritual activities would be good for them, like uh, uh, regular Bible study, Bible study, Learning the words of God, okay, and uh, gathering with a group of uh, of brothers and sisters in the church is also a kind of social activity. So spiritual activity is going to be an important part of uh, treatment of dementia. So we should try to have an environment that is friendly for the dementia. Okay, green environment, okay, exercise, diet, social life. So our patients with dementia, the patient, the dementia may take away their memories. Okay? However, the feeling of love should be, should stay with us. So even though they may not be able to forget a lot of things, but we should not forget their 
our loved relationship with our loved ones who are sufferers of dementia. Okay? So they may forget, but they should not be forgotten. So, so for patients with the, so for patients with the, in their senior age, let uh, let us not forget them. Let us make their senior age a, be a stage of integrity. Okay? So not a stage of negligence, but a stage of integrity. We should uh, show them our love and care for them, despite of their memory and uh, uh, and uh, thinking problem. So that's about that. Huh? So now let's go to another topic. That is, uh, let's go to another topic, and that is, uh, that is, uh, uh, let's go to another topic that is, uh, <clears throat> that is Parkinson's disease. Okay, let's talk about Parkinson's disease. Do you, do you see this? Do you see this? Yes, Dr. Tan, you can see it. Uh, yeah, when we say, when we talk about Parkinson's, uh, well, I'll have a brief discussion about Parkinson's. When we talk about Parkinson's, uh, we think of an important figure, which is uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Ali, okay? And he was a great uh, boxer. Eventually, because of, uh, because of, uh, uh, of uh, constant head trauma, he developed uh, Parkinson's disease. Okay? So, so what is Parkinson's disease? A uh, Parkinson's disease is a disease of the brain which is characterized by deficiency of a neurotransmitter or a chemical substance, which we call dopamine. It is important for us to have dopamine because without dopamine, we may not be able to, to move and to walk properly. So without a dopamine, one would feel weakness and there would be tremor of the body. So patients like Muhammad Ali, they suffer from Parkinson's disease. Now, why Parkinson's? You know, unlike uh, in Alzheimer's, in dementia, we named dementia after Alzheimer's because Dr. Alzheimer did a very good uh, description of, uh, of dementia. Now, in the case of Parkinson's disease, it is Dr. Parkinson, Dr. James Parkinson, who did a very good description. He even wrote a pamphlet about uh, Parkinson's disease. Okay? At that time, of course, when he described Parkinson's disease, he didn't know that uh, this disease would be named after him. Okay? So now what are the features of Parkinson's hmm? with the tremor? Hmm? The tremor of the, of the, of the, uh, of the hands. Hmm? And because of the tremor, they may problem with handwriting. Right. So tremor is one. Hmm? And so stiffness, hmm? the whole body will be in very thin, very stiff. When they walk, we can see that the body posture is very stiff. And when they talk, they cannot talk properly. Uh, not very clear. In other words, uh, they talk with, uh, with the slurred speech. The voice will be slurred and we cannot hear them properly. Okay, And even they have a problem with swallowing. And because of this, we have to be very careful with the problem, the swallowing may lead to choke. A choking will be very dangerous. It can be life-threatening. And as I said earlier, without dopamine or with uh, decreasing dopamine of the brain, of the, then the body movement will be very slow. The patients will, will, will be walking very slowly because of the weakness. And there will be loss of balance and also handwriting problems. Okay? And you can see, I said, uh, if you look at the left now, you can see that there's a deficiency of dopamine in the brain. And if we look at the right, okay, the right, the picture, okay, the patient, the posture is very rigid. Okay? Posture is very rigid. Okay? They walk slowly and there could be tremor of the, of the extremities. See, they walk with stoop posture. Okay? The, the posture is stoop okay? and the hand, there could be hand tremor. And many patients, they, uh, they don't present with uh, with those that I mentioned earlier. Some of them they may present with uh, with digestive system. In fact, some patients they their first presentation will be digestive indigestion, or they may even suffer from constipation. 
quite a good number of patients. They are able to walk properly without uh, without tremor. And the first presentation would be constipation. So patients with constipation in the elderly, we also have to be we have to consider the possibility of Parkinson's disease. Again, this is a summary of what I, we mentioned earlier: the tremor, difficulty of of, uh, of walking, and of course the sense of smell will be affected. So one way is I like get to check the smell. We can show them some foods, mm -hmm. some perfume for them to for them to, to smell. If they cannot smell, if they don't smell, then we have to, this will be an additional habit, additional feature of Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So these are the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, okay? So this is the, the latter part. And at first, if you look at the left, they can still walk alone. Then, when they, then later, they need the help of a fan and water cane. And eventually, uh, in the, as the disease uh, deteriorates, as the patient, uh, as the condition get, gets worse, then they may have to, to make use of a wheelchair. Okay. And also the face feature. With there is minimal of minimal facial expression. In case of that patient, uh, the facial there's no the patient is expression less. That's what we call it, mask passing, as if the face is wearing a mask without without facial without emotional expression. Again, so in a good number of patients with the, with Parkinson's, they also suffer from from depression. Uh, one thing I like to mention is our probiotic. Okay? Probiotic is also a uh, 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 is also it's a uh, probiotics. As I said earlier, they were they are actually bacteria. So start, there are studies showing that uh, probiotic uh, can slow down the pro the progress of uh, dementia and not, and not only dementia but also Parkinson's disease. As we know, Parkinson's disease just like dementia. They are degenerative diseases. In other words, uh, as uh, the, the, as time goes on, the disease may deteriorate and they may get worse. So probiotic, there are studies showing that probiotics can slow down the deterioration. So in addition to taking the medication to to I mean to improve the signs and symptoms of an of uh, dementia of, of, uh, of uh, Parkinson's, like uh, to decrease the tremor, to enhance their, their ability to walk, to write, and to go around. We can also let them take probiotics because probiotics can slow down hmm, the, the progress or deterioration of, uh, an, of uh, Parkinson's disease. Okay. And of course, uh, um, yeah, physical exercise is very important. It's very important. Uh, it can it can it can loosen the, the muscles and the, make the body, the, the joints, the muscles more flexible. So it's an important part of therapy of <clears throat> Parkinson's disease. And acupuncture also helps. More and more evidences are now accumulating to show that acupuncture can help in enhancing the bodily movements, reducing the tremor, enhancing, enhancing the body movements, and in, enhancing the energy of the, of the patients with, with, uh, with Parkinson's disease. And of course, we need occupational therapy for them to help them with their fine motor movements. And uh, a, a, a small portion of the patients with uh, Parkinson's disease suffer from depression. So we should also take care of the depression of the patients with uh, Parkinson's disease and also language, speech problem. So these are the, uh, the measures that we can take to help to treat okay? and also to slow down the deterioration of patients uh, of suffering from Parkinson's disease. Okay, so these are the exercises. Mm -hmm. Exercises, the therapy, 
that we can do to have patients with depression, hey, with the Parkinson disease. So that's all for my brief introduction about uh, uh, Parkinson's disease and dementia. So if you have any problem, then we can discuss them. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much. Yes, Chair. I think uh, I would like to say thank you to our esteemed speaker. Okay, um, I can I'll, I'll stop sharing now. No? Stop sharing. Yes, Dr. Dan. Let's go, go ahead. On. Go on, Che. All right. So, um, you know, this afternoon, we do have a lot of um, uh, information that coming uh, to our minds right now, questions um, that, are, that we're about to answer later. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, um, Dr. Tan, to, uh, for sharing um, his knowledge to us. And it really, really um, helped us understand what is dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and it will it it will help us eventually if if we we have a, a loved one that's suffering from from that kind of uh, condition. Yes, Doctor Tan, thank you so much for light, enlightening us. So at this moment, we gathered oh, some welcome. questions, Doctor Tan, for you to answer. You can yes, yes, answer yes. it, Doctor Tan, as briefly as you can, so that we can accommodate a lot yes, of questions. Yes. And yes, yes. for the participants also, we have a screener for the question so that it will be not uh, monotonous or it, if it is tackled already, then we will no longer um, read your questions. Shall we start, Che? Ojo. Uh, Ojo. I'm sorry. I'm going to hit the first question for Dr. Tan. Um, Dr. Tan, the first question is, is Alzheimer's disease hereditary? The, um, I'm sorry, um, the first question, uh, this is just a pop-up question, I'm sorry. I will get through the, the, the question on the screen after Dr. Tan answers uh, the question. Would that be okay, Michelle? On the question, what is the difference between tremors and Parkinson's disease? A tremor, tremor is uh, tremor is part of uh, is part of Parkinson's disease. Okay, a tremor, and uh, the tremor of Parkinson's disease is we you also we always say it's a kind of pill rolling tremor, hmm? because if you look at my, uh, it's like a, the pill rolling, like it, like the, the rolling of a pill. Okay, if you look at this. Um, if you look at my, my hand, it's a, like rolling a pill, like rolling a pill. We call it a, we call it pill rolling, with pill rolling frame. Okay? And of course, uh, we have to, of course, we have something which we call uh, essential tremor or benign tremor. Okay? So not all tremors are related to Parkinson's. That's why it's important for us to see consultation with neurologists to, for us to tell whether the tremor is a benign tremor. Especially elderly, many elderly they have tremor, and a lot of the tremors are actually benign tremor. Okay, so when we say benign, that is to say we may or may not treat them at all. Okay? However, if this tremor is due to Parkinson's disease, then they deserve to be treated. All right, uh, Doctor Doctor Tan, we have here uh, Miss Dorothy asking, can we request for Doctor Tan to share? His PowerPoint is that okay with you? I think, yeah, I think uh, okay. No, I think uh, the organizer, uh, you're going to. I think you have a record. Uh, no? I feel free to share my my uh, the the record the recorded uh, webinar to everybody. Okay. Thank you so much. And for if any problem, you if you have any problem, you can directly communicate with me or email me. Okay, I have that. All right. In my so much. my presentation, I have uh, presented my. My uh, my cell phone number and also my email address. Okay. All right, chat. Who's next? Okay. And the second question is: How many mg of vitamin D supplement? Yeah, vitamin D. Vitamin D. You can try it. 
received one tablet today, you can buy 200 international units, 2,000 international units. Okay? One tablet of 2,000 or 3,000 international units per day, it would be good for, for, for health maintenance. All right. Um, next question is from Jaime Lirio, Dr. Tan. Is there any particular ethnicity who are more prone to dementia, Parkinson's as well? No, nothing. Naman. There's no, there's no ethnicity, no, no ethnic uh, predisposition. All right. I mean, I'm Mr. Jaime. Yes. Can we have um? A question yeah, can this disease lead to death? Okay? Well, usually, usually the patients suffering from dementia in the Parkinson's, okay, they usually suffer from the complications, from the complications like a dementia patients with the, in the end in the end stage of the dementia because they are bedridden because of prolonged bedridden. They have uh, if there's the nursing care is not very well done, a chronic uh, lying down will lead to, lead to an, uh, bed sore, okay? And the bed sore will lead to bacterial infection and septicemia. And that would be dangerous. dangerous. And uh, uh, food intake, okay? Uh, so improper swallowing, aspiration, and we have aspiration pneumonia, okay, which can lead to death, okay? And fall accidents, hmm? Accidental fall leading to fracture or head trauma. Again, this would be the causes. One, these are the causes of death. Okay, and the same thing in uh, in Parkinson's disease. Okay, uh, head trauma, fall, hmm? uh, head trauma from fall and fracture. All of this, and also in the in, in the in the terminal stage of Parkinson's disease, they can also become bedridden. Okay, and because of bedridden, prolonged bedridden. Uh, Lying down on bed, we, we, they suffer from bed sore, pneumonia, and septicemia. So this would be the, the complications and the causes of this. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Napoleonko yeah. is uh, raising his hand. Uh, maybe yes. yes, we would like to accommodate uh, Mr. Napoleonko from our participants. Yeah. Hello, our senior. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, 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 Mr. Ko, yes. Yes. Go on, Mr. Ko. Uh, hey, Doc. I've been hearing that uh, to test the presence of uh, dementia, it has to be to check the amyloid in the brain. However, taking test for amyloid in the brain is quite dangerous, so nobody's taking it. Until 2017, a Japanese doctor said it can already be tested through the blood. So blood is started by high position and sent to Japan. I had mine taken 2018, it came out negative or no problem. However, I've been also watching out because during one of my tests in St. Lok 12 years ago, the doctor said my brain is shrinking. So it's a sign that Alzheimer's is starting. I was given Exelon, then Exelon was changed to a recipe. So I was a little bit concerned, but the doctor said just continue to be busy. So I continue working. And until today, I'm still around. However, among my classmates, high school classmates, two of them passed away in the year 2018 because of Alzheimer's. Right now, I have five classmates. One is totally cannot recognize people. The other four is in various stages of Alzheimer's. So I was, I'm trying now to gather data among our classmates. If there is anything specific, probably the talk that you have presented, I have pick up some of that and ask them if there is something unique among our group that among my classmates right now, three has passed away. One is totally cannot recognize people. Another four is in various stages of Alzheimer's. And thank you, Doc, for your presentation. I'm going to gather some of this permission and ask my classmate to give me data on their wife or their husband regarding what you have talked, if, if something is related. 
because I want to, I'm a little bit surprised because among my classmates, high school classmates, where we are now in our 80s, three pass away. One is totally cannot recognize people. The other four is various stages. That's all, Doc. So, well, well I have known uh, Mr. Cole for a long time. Your brain, your mental function is still very sharp. <laughs> still very sure. Uh, now, now, talking about this, uh, well, I would like to suggest for maybe for, for, for our listeners, if you have relatives, you, uh, your, uh, if they have problems with, uh, with the memory, you can, rec you can advise them to do MRI of the brain, okay, MRI of the brain. And when you do MRI of the brain, you please try to advise them to to specify dementia protocol, okay? So that, uh, so our MRI of the brain dementia protocol, so that the MRI mm -hmm. center will, uh, will do the necessary, uh, will do the necessary, uh, do necessary studies about dementia, like they can check the, uh, they can check the, uh, they can check the, uh, the volume, they can check the volume of the hippocampus, which is a, uh, which is the memory center and other parts of the brain. So specify, specify, uh, specify MRI of the brain, dementia protocol, okay, dementia protocol. Or if you do PET scan, you can also do PET scan with uh, specification of the, of the amyloid, mm -hmm. PET scan, PET amyloid, okay, so that you can also check the amyloid, uh, the amyloid uh, imaging of the brain. So these are the things that we can uh, we can do in the study of a dementia. Well, I, Doc, I, do, I just wanted to add. I think what you have said to keep on busy is really important because I now recall that among my classmates, the male classmate, at the age of sixty-five, age of seventy, they totally stop working. They said, I have worked enough. I'm going to pass it to my children. So they stop working. Although when I am in Cebu, we usually get together. We eat, we talk. And I said, what are you doing now? He said, nothing. Stay home. Go out roaming around. Go to a restaurant to eat. And that's it. So I think yeah, I what you said, that keep on busy, use your brain, is also important. Well, when we say, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, Mr. Cole said a very good point. Uh, we, can, we can retire from our profession. However, we should not retire our brain. Okay? So one may retire from the profession, but one can still engage in, in some community works, charitable work. Hmm? Like I know Mr. Cole, you're, you're already retired from your work, but you're still, your brain is still functioning actively involving in the lot of public and, uh, and the community services. So, so retiring from one work, one's work, but still, still mentally and emotionally active in public service. In that case, we are still using our brain. So using physical and also mental activity. Okay. All right. I guess we are so overwhelmed with questions right now. Um, to tell you, we have 211 participants, Dr. Tan. That, that is very overwhelming. So we'd like to tell everyone that we will try to answer your, all your questions via email. We will try to collect them all so that we, can, we would not um, take so much time of Dr. Tan's. So at this point of time, we shall award um, I, uh, certificate. Uh, that, uh, uh, by the way, yes. by the way, I, uh, I I saw a question in the in the chat box. That's a question. Uh, there is a there's a question about uh, by Doctor Filetto Chua about uh, glycetin, or which is a choline. I think this is a good medication. Okay, choline is a new medication. Uh, well, it's a, it's it's not really a new medication. It is relatively new in our country. And uh, it's a good medication for the brain and for memory. 
good medication for them. Maybe. Yeah, it's good that uh, Dr. And it's a it can be good for for enhancement of our medication. Thank you. All right. So that's it. At this point of time, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Cho Chong Tan for sharing his invaluable insights and expertise in the AgriPortal and Kabayan Partilis Medical Webinar. This is entitled Practical Knowledge on Dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's Diseases, held on the sixth day of February 2022 via Zoom, signed by Pastor David Allen. Uy and Congressman Don Sal. Thank you so much, Dr. Zan. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, also, we would like to uh, hear from, uh, before that, a little intermission, I think. We have this short ad from Ag. Uh, uh, tribe, so please uh, watch this. This is John. He is looking for a trustworthy blood glucose meter. But he is worried about the need to prick finger and blood collection. To suffer with finger pricking pain. The need for expensive lancet devices and test strips. Good news! We can help you! Introducing the world's first inductive non-invasive blood glucose meter now in the Philippines. The eTouch ETM G01E. The no needle, no blood, no pain, no infection, huge savings. It allows multiple users. Features of ETM G01E. Now for a special introductory price of 9,999 pesos. To get this one-of-a-kind product, Go to our website, drive.agronomics.ph. Yes, that is really one, on, one of a kind product. Please do visit our site for more details. All right, um, at this point of time, we would like to hear from Pastor David Allen Uy of AgriPortal PH for his closing remarks and pasasalamat. Dr. David Allen Uy is the co-founder, president, and managing director of AgriPortal Philippines. He is the president and managing director of Bucor Love Foundation Incorporated, pastor of Pray to God family, and rabbi of Israel Messianic Torah community in the Philippines. So let us all put our hands together for Pastor David. Right. A blessed afternoon to everyone. First of all, I would like to thank our Heavenly Father for the opportunity for us to learn practical knowledge on how to deal with dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's diseases. We just heard from Dr. Tan's uh, insightful medical webinar about practical knowledge on dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's diseases. And I am sure that you will agree with me that these are really serious concerns. We have come to the conclusion that finding the right support for aging loved ones make a big difference to their quality of life. Caring for those among us with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases can have significant physical, emotional, and even financial costs. The demands of day-to-day -day care, changes in family roles, and decisions about placement in a care facility can be difficult. However, being well informed is one important long-term strategy. Programs that teach families about various stages of the disease and about ways to deal with difficult behaviors and other caregiving challenges can help. Good coping skills, a strong support network, and respite care are other things that may help caregivers and family members handle the stress of caring for a loved one. Yes, this is a big challenge for everyone, not only of those who are directly affected, patience and flexibility among, along with uh, 
Self-care and the support of friends and families can help you deal with the challenges and frustrations ahead. So instead of trying to bring people with these diseases back to reality, let us emphasize, let us empathize and build emotional connection to them. Let us share the practical knowledge of dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases as we learn today. Now is the time. So on behalf of AgriPortal Advocates Philippines, I would like to thank you, Dr. Chu Chong Tan, for sharing your knowledge and experience. It was indeed a learning experience for many amongst us who are now senior citizens, as well as for our young people too, that they now learn how to understand their elderly, their grandma, their grandpa in their families and how to take care of them. I would like also to thank our partner and co-presenter, Kabayan Party List, to my compadre, Kong Ron Salo, spiritual mentor, Bishop Paul Hernandez, my dear brother, Daniel Ching, District Governor of Lions Club, District 301-A3, who's also the president of the Kim Siu Ching Family Association and the Federation of the Electrical Electronic Suppliers and Manufacturers of the Philippines, the Bucola Foundation, and of course, our sponsor, Tribe Agronomics Corporation, Soil.ph, Seeding.ph, and Arizona Integrated Technologies, your one-stop shop for all your electrical needs. And thank you, fellow advocates and kabayans and everyone who took time from their Sunday's rest to, particip to participate in this series of medical webinar, which we started last January 23. As we look forward for more free webinar series to come, you are such a wonderful audience. Most of all, thank you to those who make this webinar a resounding success. Kudos to the, Kaba to the Kabayan AgriPortal joint team efforts and have a pleasant evening ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor David. Okay, we have come to an end of our webinar today, but we will not end this webinar without our closing prayer, which will be led by Pastor King Flores. You know, Pastor King is a businessman and chairman of Transformation Network Philippines. He has been an integral part of building some of the most extraordinary models of transformation we know, such, such as the prostitution riddled hotel chain that today is a wholesome, family-friendly enterprise. He has been instrumental in bringing prayer to influence some of the highest offices of government in our nation. The prayer evangelism-based transformation effort he led brought his own city from the brink of bank bankruptcy to having a 3 billion peso surplus. Today, the city has been declared a model city of the Philippines and carries its official seal, the praise Paranaque City, dedicated to God. So may we call on Pastor King to lead us with our prayer. Okay, let's all pray. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the availability of your solution, Lord, to whatever problems we may have. We thank you and we bless you for the uh, uh, availability of Pastor, I mean, Dr. Sho. Thank you, Lord, that you have uh, allowed him, Lord, to experience all of this uh, expertise on how we can prevent and even solve, Lord, the problem of Alzheimer's or dementia. We pray, O oh God, that even right now among us here in this Zoom meeting, Lord, may your hand of protection be upon all of us. And if we have friends, relatives who are already suffering from this ailment, Lord, may your hand of blessing for healing, Lord, be upon them. May you also touch, Lord, everyone, Lord, who is suffering from all these uh, other uh, correlated uh, diseases and ailments. And we ask you, oh God, as you are our great physician and you are our great healer, Lord, help us to be well to be made whole by your grace and by your power. And may these uh, lessons, Lord, we have learned today from Dr. Cho be multiplied as we take care, Lord, of our relatives and friends who are suffering from this ailment. May you use us, Lord, to be a channel of, of your blessing, of your hand, of your grace, Lord, to reach out to them and to share all of this information so that we can prevent and all together enjoy the life that you have given us as jesus said he came that we might have life 
and have it more abundantly. We speak blessings now to the sponsors, AgriPortal and Kabayan. May you prosper, Lord, everything that they are doing. As you also, Lord, prosper everyone in this Zoom meeting, everything that you have entrusted to us. There will be a rapid multiplication so that we are tremendously blessed and we can be a ready channel of your blessings to others. Dismiss us now, Lord, with your manifest presence. We thank you that we can start the whole week focusing on you, that you are a great and awesome and a good God that we can always trust upon our health, our resources, and everything, Lord, that you have placed upon our hands. So, God, dismiss us now with your blessings. We thank you. We give praise and glory. And we also give credit to Dr. Chu for sharing his knowledge. And affirm now, Lord, every prayer we have prayed today, including those ones and our desires and wishes in each of our hearts. Lord, look upon them with favor and affirm to answer all of them because we pray now, Lord, in agreement and with thanksgiving and ask all of these things in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Bless you all, Pa. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Pastor King. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending so much. our medical webinar. Please check on us for upcoming webinars and we will send you invites also. Again, I am She Aguinaldo and And thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, everyone. God bless. God Bye. bless. Thank, thank you, Dr. Chagin. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Thank you. Bye-bye.